this is going to be a public relations, trust your government and your health officials, public campaign. You know, there's no conspiracy here, folks. Just right. get your damn vaccine. Right. Listen to our government agencies. These guys are telling the truth. Forget the conspiracy. Just right. get your damn vaccine. Just right. get your damn vaccine. Right. Now, because of this flu season being so important, certain states, including our state, New York State, are actually making it mandatory for health care workers right. to get vaccinated against both seasonal flu and H1N1. This is going to be a public relations, trust your government and your health officials, public campaign. It is very, very important, especially for healthcare workers, because traditionally only about 40% of healthcare workers get vaccinated, and we are excellent, Anna. We are the vectors of spread for this virus. Right. In addition, you don't want your doctor himself or herself to be mm -hmm. sick, so very important for healthcare workers. We should strive for close to 100% compliance. There you go. Anna, did you get your shot yet? Yes. yes. Okay. Yesterday. Let's just right. get your damn vaccine. But we trusted the scientists back in 1976 with the original swine flu shot, and a lot and of it was a debacle. Sick. Right. Not only that, some people died, some people were paralyzed. From the shot itself. And yeah. people remember the swine flu vaccine as a terrible disaster. Remember the swine flu scare of 1976? That was the year the U.S. government told us all that swine flu could turn out to be a killer that could spread across the nation. And Washington decided that every man, woman, and child in the nation should get a shot to prevent a nationwide outbreak, a pandemic. Well, 46 million of us obediently took the shot. And now 4,000 Americans are claiming damages from Uncle Sam amounting to three and a half billion dollars because of what happened when they took that shot. By far the greatest number of the claims, two-thirds of them, are for neurological damage or even death. Dr. David Sensor, then head of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, is now in private industry. He devised the swine flu program and he pushed it. Did anyone ever come to you and say, you know something, fellas? There's the possibility of neurological damage if you get into a mass immunization program. No. No one ever did? No. Do you know Michael Hatwick? Yes, mm -hmm. Dr. Michael Hatwick directed the surveillance team for the swine flu program at the CDC. His job was to find out what possible complications could arise from taking the shot and to report his findings to those in charge. Did you know ahead of time, Dr. Hatwick, that there had been case reports of neurological disorders, neurological illness, apparently associated with the injection of influenza vaccine? Absolutely. You did? Yes. How'd you know that? By review of the literature. What would you say if I told you that your superiors say that you never told them about the possibility of neurological complications? That's nonsense. I can't believe that they would say that they did not know that there were neurological illnesses associated with influenza vaccination. That simply is not true. We did know that. You didn't feel it was necessary to tell the people that information? Uh, I think that uh, over the, the years we have tried to inform the American people as, as fully as possible. Listen to our government agencies. These guys are telling the truth. You know, there's no conspiracy here, folks. Just right. get your damn vaccine. During major flu epidemics, millions of people are sick and thousands die. Well, this year you can get protection. The vaccines are safe, easy to take, and they can protect you against flu. So roll up your sleeve. Protect yourself. One of those who did roll up her sleeve was Judy Roberts. She was perfectly healthy, an active woman, when in November of 1976, she took her shot. Two weeks later, she says, she began to feel a numbness starting up her legs. I joked about it at that time. I said, I'll be numb to the knees by Friday as it just keeps up. By the following week, I was totally paralyzed. So completely paralyzed, in fact, that they had to operate on her to enable her to breathe. And for six months, Judy Roberts was a quadriplegic. The diagnosis? A neurological disorder called Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS for short. These neurological diseases are little understood. They affect people in different ways. As you can see in these home movies taken by a friend, Judy Roberts' paralysis confined her mostly to a wheelchair for over a year. But this disease can even kill. Indeed, there are 300 claims now pending from the families of GBS victims who died. Judy, why did you take the flu shot? I'd never taken any other flu shots, but I felt like this was going to be a major epidemic. 
and the only way to prevent a major epidemic of a, a really deadly variety of flu was for everybody to be immunized. I don't want to have that kind of vaccination in my child yet until I know it's safe, 100% safe. You would be heartbroken if you did not vaccinate your child and that child got sick with influenza and found that your child was in the hospital close to death. But moms like Cory Bureau still aren't sold. I don't feel just because the government's telling me that I need to get this you know, flu shot for her or my, my youngest that I should go and do that. The challenge for public officials? Convincing the public to heed their advice instead of a mother's intuition. Well, for more on how the United States is applying those very lessons, I spoke a brief time ago with Dr. William Schaffner, who chairs the Department of Preventative Medicine at Vanderbilt Medical School. Dr. Schaffner, thanks very much for coming in. Um, everyone is talking about this swine flu vaccine. I gather you got a jab yesterday in uh, the trial. I, how do you feel? I did terrific. Actually, it hurt less than my regular influenza vaccine, which always tingles for about an hour or so. Dr. Schaffner, thanks very much for coming in. Um, everyone is talking about this swine flu vaccine. Everyone is talking about this swine flu, swine flu. The concerns include possibly using chemical additives or adjuvants to boost the effectiveness of the vaccine. They have never been used in flu vaccines in the U.S., but have safely been used in others, such as tetanus. Critics also worry that some forms of the vaccine will contain thimerosal, a mercury-containing preservative. Thimerosal has never been associated in any valid scientific way with any adverse effect to the fetus or to young people. A congressional committee that studied the matter has already concluded thimerosal is directly related to the autism epidemic. It could have been prevented or curtailed had the FDA not been asleep at the switch, allowing the untested toxic to be part of the vaccine recipe, something the committee report blamed on misplaced protectionism of the pharmaceutical industry. Some examples of the scientific papers he's talking about, a study of monkeys that showed vaccinated primates showed increased neurological disorders and non-social behavior similar to autism. Another animal study that shows the kind of mercury used in vaccines ends up in the brain and stays twice as long as the mercury in fish. A study of vaccination records which seems to match increased autism with increased vaccinations containing mercury. And then there's the circumstantial evidence. UPI found only four cases of autism among a community of 22,000 Amish people who generally shun vaccines. Statistically, there should be about 130. And it turns out that three of them were vaccinated and the other lived near a power plant that releases mercury. Thimerosal, a preservative which was taken out of childhood vaccines a while ago because there was fear it could be linked to autism, is being used in some batches of the H1N1 vaccine. Are you concerned that will keep some parents from having their children vaccinated? Thimerosal has been proven to be safe, is used in seasonal vaccine, uh, seasonal flu vaccine, and again, we want to assure people that, that uh, the scientists, again, have confirmed uh, that there is really a safe factor with using thimerosal. It's an effective preservative and one that uh, we think actually adds to the likelihood that we'll have a safe vaccine for a while to come. There's literally hundreds and hundreds of studies that connect thimerosal to, you know, to these disastrous neurological disorders. I talk to the scientists and I talk to the federal bureaucrats who are defending thimerosal and I said, what are you relying on? And I looked at the signs they're relying on it. And I can tell you, Joe, it is so weak. And you and I have seen, you know, legal practice when junk science, and we know, you know, what these phony scientists are who create it this stuff. It happens in big tobacco. Right. Tobacco. It happens in and big this, oil. And this it's is happening in global warming. And, and now it's happening in a way that's impacting is, our kids' lives. This is classic tobacco science. It is junk science. And I was looking at these reports and saying, this is the best. This is what you're relying on. They know it's fraudulent. Okay. Uh, the scientists, again, have confirmed uh, that there is really a safe factor with using thimerosal. It's just right. get your damn vaccine. The U.S. military considering a plan that could establish regional military teams to assist civilian authorities in the event of a major outbreak of the virus this fall. It's a what-if worst-case scenario. What if local police were not enough to quell crowds of people so panicked to get a flu shot they turn violent? Well, that is when they call in the National Guard. We're treating every situation as it's actually happening. Uh, we try to train as we fight, we say in the military. 
You guys be loud and boisterous. All right, cause some confusion. This drill's designed to look and feel as realistic as possible, right down to the actual pepper spray and live tasers. These guardsmen don't know what to expect. In this drill, the troubles created by people showing up without proper ID or living outside the designated vaccination area. All potential real-life scenarios. Ultimately, the guard makes many arrests and is forced to shut this vaccination site down. This bill that recently passed the Massachusetts Senate says that if there is a swine flu pandemic and you don't get the swine flu vaccine, you can be ordered into quarantine. If you refuse the quarantine, you can face a fine of $1,000 per day that you resist. Many citizens are concerned that the bill's provisions will abuse their constitutional rights.